Are you too defensive in your doubles? This is one way of turning your defense into an offense situation. So how you win most double games is being in the offensive situation. Although I personally love to stay in the defense in doubles, that's not how you win games. So in this video, we're gonna focus on one very simple thing you could do, turning your situation defense into offense. I think you can use this both in your doubles, but also in mixed, especially as a mixed double girl. So the simple thing here is actually once you're in your defense situation, your defensive, it's so easy to do long defense. It's so easy to do flat defense. Actually, you need to step in and block the shuttle. And once you block it and you can see the quality is good in your block shot, you just rush to the net, try to cover that, turning it into a offensive situation. Sometimes it could be that you could play a winner after that. Another time, maybe you just play a shot. So you're able to get the initiative in the rally. There are many exercises that you can use to practice being able to play the block shot. We're gonna show you two variants that we believe are super good in practicing from a defensive situation into an offensive situation. Exercise one is a two versus one exercise. The two side are the feeders and of course the one being alone is the one doing the exercise. If we focus on the position for the feeders, one is at the back, one is at the rear court and the other one is at the net. The one at the rear court are able to play drop shots, dick smashes and power smashes. The one at the front are able to play drives, also block shots. What happens here is the one doing the exercises in a defensive situation. They can do whatever, they can do lifts, they can do drives, but every time they play a block shot, that's where they should focus on rushing to the net, rushing to meet the shuttle high, turning that defensive situation into an offensive situation. After that, mainly the, the exercise ends once the one uh, doing the exercise rushes to the net and maybe does a, a kill. It's okay in this exercise to exaggerate the situation a little bit, to just rush to the net. And sometimes it's not super realistic, but I think it's being able to practice that mindset. If you do a quality block shot, you should rush to the net, trying to get maximum impact from that situation. So one thing to remember here is I said a quality block shot. If you play a block shot in bad quality and you still rush to the net, that's where you get in trouble. So if we see in the clips here, if the block shot is in bad quality, it's okay for the feeder to kill it because we don't want to give you that habit that if you play a bad quality block shot that you're still able to rush to the net and get the kill. That's not realistic. So again here, the feeder at the net has a key position here. So once they feel that the block shot coming from the one doing the exercise is in good quality, they should play a shot which goes a bit upwards so the one doing the exercise are able to rush to the net. So it's kind of like if you're playing a good block shot, you should get rewarded and being able to rush to the net and, and do the kill. So of course, if you are doing this exercise, you need to move on your feet. If you stand too still, you're not gonna get in any good position as with any other exercise. So footwork is important. I'm constantly highlighting that, but it is a key thing having your racket ready in front of you, not leave it hanging by your feet. Always have it ready here in front of you in a defensive position. So the racket is perhaps pointing slightly downwards and then do whatever. Sometimes when you have the opportunity, go in, play the block shot and then just rush to the net. As mentioned, it is okay that it feels a bit exaggerated. I just wanna get you into that habit that you move to the net once you play a quality shot. It's also okay to do mistakes. That's why we practice. So exercise two, two feeders standing at the net doing drives and the one doing the exercise is standing on, on the middle of the court in a slightly defensive situation and being able to play drive to both sides. Once the one doing the exercise are playing that block shot, again, if it's in good quality, the feeder plays it a bit upwards so the one are able to rush to the net. I would like you to play once the one doing the exercise are playing that block shot to one of the sides, they also rush to that side. So the feeder shouldn't play a cross court shot if the one doing the exercise are playing that block shot. Just play a straight one back so the, the one doing the exercise are able to rush to the net. As in exercise one, always be ready. 
in your feed, both as the one doing it, as the ones feeding. If we're just mentally gone, it always ruins any exercise. So be ready here. The one doing the exercise, of course, needs to have a loose grip so they're able to play it both from the forehand and, and the backhand side and being able to move their body kind of anticipating where the shuttle is coming. Badminton isn't a black and white game, so I can't really give you any, any guidelines here. You need to adjust towards where the shuttle is coming. Giving a quick recap here, we have gone through two exercises. Both of them are two versus one. One is a half court exercise where two feeders are front and back. And then the other exercise where the two feeders are at the net. Both are the same. The one doing the exercise has random options, but every time they play a quality block shot, they should move to the net as fast as they can and trust it 100%.